Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and welcome back to Elder Law 101, uh, the seminar series that I developed uh, and am presenting in 11, or excuse me, in 12 separate episodes, one a month. Uh, and the goal of, the, of Elder Law 101 is to take all of the seminars that I've done in the past and to package them in a way so that you could kind of see through your whole life, well, even from before you were a senior, but through your life as a senior, uh, what the issues are that you need to be thinking about. The purpose of these seminars is not to get all of the answers. Uh, the purpose is to make sure that you understand that there are questions that may need answers so that you can talk about to someone about your individual situation. So um, we've been doing these uh, presentations now uh, um, through the year. We're up to number 11. It's actually November right now. Uh, in the first presentation we talked about, uh, in, we always talked about my friends Frank and Mary. Um, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., we, we kind of followed them through their lives. In the first presentation, we talked about incapacity in estate planning before age 60, uh, which has its own set of issues to it. Your t children are typically then younger, you're then younger, your sense of health issues is very different. We talked about things to consider in the next seminar in your 60s, uh, where we talked a lot about Social Security. Um, we talked about the, the fact that you can now start pulling out your deferred income funds. We did not talk in that seminar uh, at all uh, about Medicare because I held that conversation for today because it's really a separate conversation. We talked about dealing with life in your 70s, which is often a time where you're thinking about changing, where you may be thinking of downsizing or having somebody move in with you or you're just a bunch of different and you're kind of anticipating now how you're going to deal with, with older age. I talked about um, dealing with uh, taxes specifically this was way back in April uh, because that's, that, one, that, like Medicare, is really a specific topic. Then I talked about dealing with life in your 80s. If you're a senior, um, oftentimes that's a time when you've got some health problems, you've got a whole bunch of different issues to face, among others, mass health. Uh, I took, did a set, separate seminar to just talk about why it is that you can always qualify for mass health. Um, and what, by the way, when I say that, I always have to emphasize it's why you can always qualify for mass health. Not, uh, it, if you're, it, it, unless you're in the community and have high income. Uh, if, you, if you need nursing home care or you need a lot of care at home in order to avoid going to a nursing home, then you can always qualify for Mass Health. Uh, I took, do a separate seminar specifically on the last year of your life. Uh, that's a year that can be uh, obviously a, you know, a, a, a depressing time, a stressful time. And the question is, you know, how do you kind of prepare yourself to deal with that? Uh, I do a, I talk about your, your, your planning after you're dead, what, what needs to get done following your death, uh, whether it's a, through a state administration. I do a, did a separate seminar on trusts. I know, they, I know that they are, we're always talking about them. The question is, how do they work? What are the different kinds of trusts? There is, trusts are meant as an answer to a, que, uh, to a problem. The question is, what's the problem? And, the, and what is the correct answer? I, um, last month I talked about what to do about the kids and the grandkids. If you're doing your estate planning, you have some specific questions about um, before or after you have died, you know, what are, the, what are the things you want to consider when you're giving things to your children or to your grandchildren. Um, then finally today, uh, and, and by the way, this is the 11th of 12 in the final uh, presentation, we're going to talk about giving, which is a to common topic uh, in December. Uh, but also about uh, tax planning, which is not necessarily as common a topic, but is really important to you as a senior, especially if you have tax deferred funds. So today we're talking about Medicare. Uh, and, and I wanna emphasize, and we're gonna talk about, once again, we're always talking about our friends, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Uh, or excuse me, our, our friends Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And by the way, this topic is feeling very relevant to me. Uh, I'm 73 and I'm in generally good health but last Saturday pulled out my back. Now this is, I pulled out my back and I, that's been happened certainly a number of times over the years, but it's now a week later and I'm still having problems with my back. This is not in the way it would have been, you know, 20 or 30 years ago. So suddenly I found, you know, I, talk, I need to talk to my doctor and I've got some meds and so you're dealing with this whole set of issues which are just inherent to becoming a senior. So if you're Frank and Mary, uh, during your lifetime, if you were, when you were Frank and Mary and you were like 40, and Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. were 10, 8, and 6, you had a very different kind of sets of concerns 
about what kind of insurance you needed. Because the real, Medicare is insurance. Uh, and the, it, like house insurance and auto insurance. So what is insurance? It is, it is a payment that you're making to somebody uh, as a premium uh, in order to make sure that if an, an emergency happens, if something bad happens, you're gonna get something in return. So if you're Frank and Mary and you're 40, the question is, well, what will, you know, what if the house burns down? We need something, we need to make sure that's covered. What if I get into a car accident? What if I get hurt? What if I hurt somebody else? Um, well, if, what if one of the kids gets hurt? How do I kind of deal with that? And will one of us die suddenly? When you're 40, you're really not thinking about illness. You're thinking about the possibility of sudden death. Certainly illness sometimes happens, but it's rare um, when you're 40. Uh, when you're 60, however, uh, or 70 or 80, um, and your kids are grown up, uh, the, the cluster is a little different. Certainly you want to still make sure that your house uh, is, is okay if it burns down, and, but you're also very concerned about, will I die tomorrow? You get to a certain age. Uh, I think I had mentioned in an earlier seminar, I had um, earlier this year my third TIA, uh, uh, which is a mini stroke. Uh, it, it, it is very um, enlightening to go through that because you come to realize at the moment at which your arm is getting numb and your leg is getting numb that this might be it, right? I might be dead, right? So, so what, you know, you, you get a concern about, will I, at some point I'll die, what happens if I die suddenly? But even worse for most people, what if I get really sick? Certainly there's an issue about will it, what, what happens if there's a car accident, although that's much rarer the older that you get. The real question is what happens if I get really sick? Um, because there are a whole cluster of problems around that, that right? Uh, and they're all expenses that you may not have the cash to take care of. The hospital, the ambulance, the doctors, the physical and, th physical and other therapists, the drugs, right? You know, what, what to do about all of those problems? That's a real concern as you get to be our age. The answer, uh, of course, uh, for many, uh, is Medicare. Um, the point of Medicare, uh, it's hard to believe now, uh, kind of the point of Medicare is really, in, is really embodied in this statistic that in 1960, 33% uh, of seniors uh, lived in poverty. Uh, in 2020, 6% of seniors live in poverty. Most of that is because of Medicare. Uh, it's because you had people who would get older, could not qualify for traditional insurance, were old, and so forth. Though, so they would get sick and they would die, right? And, 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 and that sickness often would not be covered. And so oftentimes they would get sick and then they would just be stuck be going bankrupt because they had gotten sick. Uh, so Medicare was meant to solve that. And it has to a tremendous extent. I know seniors that I speak to are regularly really stressed about what it's gonna cost for them to live for the rest of their lives. Um, and, they, and they talk to me a lot about uh, nursing home coverage um, and trying to deal with that if they ever need it. The reason for that is that is the one major medical expense that is not covered uh, by Medicare. For other expenses, they kind of don't even think about it. The, you know, the doctors and the hospitals, and now the, even the drugs, which were a tremendous drain on people's resources, and still are to some extent, but nothing like what it was before Medicare Part D had been adopted. So there is traditional Medicare. Let me just, I just wanna talk about the pieces of the insurance puzzle that you need to solve in order to try to get a good night's sleep knowing that your finances are gonna be okay if you get sick. So traditional Medicare, the wonderfulness of it is, you don't pay a premium, at least not for Medicare A. Medicare A, and originally uh, Medicare historically was created through an incredible lobbying effort by the American Hospital Association because they were realizing the, the tremendous cost to them and to their structure of dealing with seniors who had no resources because they had a, had a, you know, a moral obligation 
to deal with seniors, um, and also they were typically nonprofits, uh, 501c3s, and therefore required to provide free care, and it was bankrupting a lot of these places. So Medicare A was designed especially to take care of hospitals. So uh, in Medicare, a, Medicare A provides for, um, uh, covers your hospital expense from admission. Uh, there is a deductible um, and, and there is a maximum number of days in the hospital. Um, basically, you go to the hospital um, and initially the, 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 there's an initial um, deductible, then you're there for, you can be there at the hospital, if I recall correctly, for up to 60 days per um, Medicare stay before you dip into your lifetime number of available extra days that you can stay in the hospital. And without going through the whole system, the point is Medicare A is designed to cover hospital stays, however, there is a, there is a copay. Um, if you are, have been in a, a uh, hospital for a short period, at least a short period of time, and then get discharged from the hospital directly to a nursing home, then Medicare will also cover up to 100 days in the nursing home, uh, but uh, very seldom does. Uh, Medicare typically covers 17 days in the uh, nursing home. One of the reasons for that is uh, that me Medicare um, well, to be honest, I think one of the reasons for that is that Medicare uh, reimbursements to the nursing home uh, go down substantially uh, if it is, unless it is shown that the, that the care that is being given uh, is improving your situation uh, consistently. And so um, med the, 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 the uh, nursing homes themselves uh, often are not really interested in your staying on nursing home for a prolonged period because their reimbursement rates go down so much. So Medicare will cover up to that 100 days in skilled nursing. Uh, it also covers um, this uh, special program, which by the way, you know, you should become aware of uh, and talk to the shine counselor or your doctor or others about just in case you need it, which is the program that is available for folks who are at home, um, but are homebound, and therefore uh, cannot leave the home in order to get other services at the hospital or at their doctors or whatever. So that's the, the point of the, the program, and the way the program works is that if your doctor certifies that you need this program, then the program is available to you for in, in 60 day increments. Um, but those, in, and that will cover during that period nursing care, not home care, not just regular non-skilled home care, uh, but nursing care and a, a set of other benefits. And that 60-day period can be renewed uh, uh, for, forever. You could li literally just keep using these 60-day increments um, for as long as you live. Then there is the hospice benefit. The benefit that I really like to promote and encourage people to understand, it's the benefit that is available for those folks who are living um, um, in a situation where uh, the, the, they are not thinking that the care that, or not designing their medical care in order to have them get better. Uh, they're not um, looking to improve, they're not, they don't have a kind of disease or they're not in a situation where things are going to get better for them. They're really in a situation where they want to be, they want care that will help them to live every day as well as, well as they can um, um, for as long as they can, but the main thing is to make sure that every day is good. Um, so that hospice is also available through Medicare A, uh, and there are no um, deductibles for any of this, and there isn't, there, it, so. Um, then there's Medicare B. Medicare B covers everything else. It covers all the other stuff that you think about. It covers doctors, it covers day treatments, Emergency rooms, labs, diagnostic tests, durable medical equipment, vi visits to the hospital after you've gotten out of the hospital, so after your Medicare A has stopped, if you're going back to the hospital for treatments as opposed to being treated at home. Um, in Medicare B, there are copays, um, and they are fairly um, significant ones, and there, I want to say, there, there, and, and there is an, um, an annual payment that you make. Uh, typically, for any service that you're getting that is covered by Medicare B, Medicare will do this calculation of what the um, value of that service is 
or the cost of that service is in your area, and Medicare will then pay for 80% of that amount. The rest of it is on you. So Medicare B services do not come for free, right? But, they, but Medicare does cover a substantial amount of the bill. And because it's Medicare, no matter how much your doctor or other service provider wants to charge, uh, Medicare determines how much that doctor or other service provider can charge, pays 80% of it, and specifies as a condition of these doctors and other providers uh, accepting these payments that um, they can't bill you any more than that. The so-called balance billing is uh, prohibited. They can't bill you for the balance of that additional payment. So the point is, Medicare B, and, right, and, and as of uh, now, uh, the, med the mandated monthly premium for Medicare B is $174.80 at least. It might be higher than that, and it typically is, can get much higher than that if you have a lot of extra income. I know one of the, uh, and, and by the way, that extra income is based on your previous year's income. So I've had, had people call me because their um, Medicare, pre, their, their, their Part B uh, deductible or payment went up to $300 from 174 to this huge figure. And then I'll talk to them and, and they'll say, oh, well, you know, so what happened? Did your income go up? Oh, no, we just sold our house. Well, if you sold your house, that was income. If that income th therefore pushed your other income above the, the, the limits that are specified in Medicare, for that one year for that, uh, that your income was really high, Medicare is going to whack you. So anyway, that's how the traditional plans work. And then there are the supplemental plans, the plans that cover what Medicare doesn't. So when you think about, uh, w w when I was younger, um, I always thought, it, thought that there was just one plan, and maybe there was, I don't know, it's called MedX, and that was the point of MedX. MedX was meant to cover any of the deductibles or co-pays, any of the other costs that were incurred after um, the government paid their Medicare A or Medicare B payment. Uh, now there are a number of these plans uh, that are out there. They vary by, they pr they're priced differently. They vary by, you know, certainly, m I think many people get basically the highest level plan because that highest level plan will cover all of the deductibles and therefore that highest level plan has the highest of the, uh, of the monthly premiums. So in terms of dealing with your non-drug related health care, um, you need to figure out, the, the, there are all these calculations um, that would kind of automatically happen if you're simply on standard Medicare A and B and haven't done anything else. Then there's Medicare D. Uh, you may remember Medicare D was adopted, seems like a long time ago now, in the Bush administration about 10 years ago. Uh, and the point was that there were so many seniors that were having such financial problem dealing with drugs, which was never covered by Medicare A or Medicare B. So. Under Medicare, Medicare D, government's not throwing any money, um, um, but you, the, the, there, are, there are various plan providers who can be the same providers like Blue Cross and Harvard Pilgrim and other large providers that are providing uh, Medicare um, supplemental plans who will also provide a plan uh, that will pay for your drugs except that the plan won't pay for like all of your drugs. The plan will pay for some of the drugs uh, and it may or may not have a copay and it may or may not have, there may or may not be deductibles. The premium will be fixed during the year um, and some drugs may not be covered. So the, the challenge regarding Medicare D is that things are not fixed and you don't know what's gonna be there from year to year and so what you really need to do uh, is shop among the available Medicare D plans, including, by the way, the plan that you're probably now on, uh, to make sure that that plan next year is still going to give you the benefits um, that you were hoping that it's, it was going to give you. Then finally, there's Medicare C, um, which is used nationally a lot. Over 33% of all cases are Medicare C cases. In Massachusetts, uh, much less so. It's a, they're private insurance plans. They're offered by a number of the companies not on Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard where I do a lot of work, but every place else where I do work. Uh, and, they offer off, and they often offer some 
additional benefits that you wouldn't get under traditional Medicare. Eye care, hearing care, uh, dental, uh, the cost of staying healthy. Often, uh, often I hear people refer to the, sil the silver sneakers plan, which is one of the Medicare C plans uh, dealing with all of that. So the good news about Medicare is that everyone qualifies for all plans. You can change your Medicare D plan, you can change your Medicare C plan, right? Um, that, those changes occur once a year uh, when there's this period during which you're supposed to kind of re-examine your plans. That period is right now. Uh, it started October 15th and it runs until December 7th. The bad news is, though, you need to figure all this out yourself. So the question is, how do you figure this out? Well, this presentation, as you've been able to tell, is not about legal advice, right? This is really kind of more general advice about dealing with this issue, which every senior faces. But from all the folks that I've talked to, um, they, they'll tell me, they'll, they'll first of all, figure out what's your strategy. First of all, what's your Medicare D plan? You need to check what it is now, check what your premium is, and look at that same plan and see what it's gonna be next year, and then compare it to other plans. Then you gotta figure out your Medicare supplemental coverage, what used to be called MedX, which plan, you're not, you now have that plan, you could get a new plan next year. Um, the question is, what's the best deal for you among all of the plans? Then you wanna consider Medicare C, because Medicare C covers all of the above. Medicare C covers everything that A, B, and D cover, and, some, and the extras. So you wanna compare then what those extras are and the pricing of all of those extras against traditional Medicare A, B, and D. <clears throat> but finally, my strong recommendation is that before you try to actually figure all that out, get yourself some help. Um, three obvious places of getting the help are the Shine counselors that are at the local senior centers, um, the Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, uh, located in Worcester, that provides advice to folks, and, and these are all for free, and, and private sector advisors. Um, there's a wonderful one, uh, Peter McKay, who I do this slide, and of course it's in Nantucket and everybody knows Peter McKay, because Peter had worked for years and years uh, at the hospital, um, it, um, de dealing with all of these issues of patients that were going home and what the available services were, et cetera. He finally retired um, uh, um, so that he could just play a lot more golf, but also so that he could do this. He provides advice to folks every year um, to, who are, to help them try to figure out what their new plan is. is. Typically, he tells people, I can say, he, he's, he tell, he's given me these incredible stories of people who walked in thinking that everything was the same for them uh, for next year and finding that they could actually save literally thousands of dollars the following year just by sitting down and examining what the new plans were, what the available plans were. Um, so what, cause, and as he told me, what you need to look at um, is you need to look at what your drugs are that you're taking. You need to look at what the drug strength is, right? Doesn't make any difference how many pills. If you got 100 pills that have only got, you know, one uh, milligram of something as opposed to one pill that's got 100 milligrams, you may want to just take one pill. Uh, what's the dosage strength and how many doses per week or per month do you use? And then you use that to figure out um, based on these different plans, what, it would what these different plans would cost you. Then what he tells me that you need to do is you need to look in the mirror. Um, because the nice thing about uh, Medicare um, is that it, 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 you can really try to estimate, you can look, at, look forward and say, you know, maybe I was really healthy this year, but do I have operations that I know are coming next year? Am I worried about potential real changes in my health or in my health care costs next year. So look in the mirror and, and you need to say to yourself, so how much risk do I want to take and how much risk can I afford? Uh, many people can't afford these, maxim, these maximum plans. If you can, then the, it's a budget question. Do I want to use that money now for insurance versus keeping it in the bank? Um, get some advice. The best thing that I can tell you to do is talk to one of those Shine counselors. I'm just using um, Carolyn McLeod as the example because in, in, all of the, in my experience over the last 13 years at Myrick O'Connell um, uh, working on these matters, she's the greatest Shine counselor I've ever met. Um, but 
talk to the Shine counselors in your community or in any community since all senior centers are open to all seniors. You know, it's not just by community. Figure all this stuff out, hopefully with some kind of professional advice. Look at the Medicare C options if they're available for you. Um, and then add, add up the bills, add up everything, and just figure out which one is better. You know, because you're, you're, this is a, these are classic insurance questions. The question is how much premium do you want to pay versus how much insurance do you want to pay for? Once you're up, once you're done, or you know, see if your current plan needs changes. See if the, your plan itself has changed because the old plan may not be the right one for next year. Uh, and then buy yourself dinner with all the money you just saved by figuring all that out. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you take my advice, which is don't go talk to your lawyer. Go talk to the Shine counselor or private advisor, right? Do them, figure this out. Or do it yourself as a test. Do it yourself. Figure out the, the amount of money you were going to spend when you did it yourself. Then go talk to one of the Shine counselors. See if you came up with the same number. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I look forward to seeing you on, the, on the, uh, the next and final installment of Elder Law 101. Thank you very much.